Hey, what's up? How's it going? Just want to do a quick review uh, of the Rolex Daytona 116520 Cosmograph. And uh, I've had this watch for almost two years now. And I have to say, you know, the Rolex Daytona is definitely an aspirational piece. And, you know, I, I initially I had my doubts about it. I was wondering what the, what the fuss is all about, the Rolex Daytona. Is it really worth the money? And uh, after owning it for um, almost two years now, I have to say it's it's a you know I've really fallen for this Rolex Daytona. It's definitely uh, a keeper uh, in my collection, and you know just wanted to share with you my experience with it. You know, prior to owning the Daytona, you know, I've had pretty much uh, experience almost all of the. The, the Rolex Sport, Steel Sports models, uh, the Submariner, Explorers, uh, Explorer 2, uh, the GMT, uh, the Milgaus, everything but the Daytona. I just could not uh, pull the trigger on the Daytona because at the time it was fairly, it was, you know, it was always commanding a premium, right? It was always selling for above MSRP. And for that money, you know, you could go for an AP Royal Oak. Right, and and these always have traded uh, around the same price as the AP Royal Oak One Five Three Zero Zero. They still do, and um, you know at the time I decided to go for for those higher brands like a Patek uh, and APs. But I finally pulled the trigger just to experience what it was and what what the fuss is all about. You know, the Daytona is probably one of the few watches that if you bought brand new, you would be in the money, where right? the other being obviously the Patek Nautilus uh, and probably the Aquanaut and maybe the, the AP Royal Oak Jumbo, the 15202. Uh, other than that, you know, I have to say it is it is a very beautiful watch. I've, you know, the pushers, uh, is stunning. Right, uh, I bought this right when the ceramic bezel came out. Right, I think a lot of people were, uh, were were selling these off, trying to get their hands on the new ceramic Daytonas. In my humble opinion, I think the look of this. And you know, I prefer the I prefer the, the the steel bezel. I think it's just preference, right? Subjective. Um, you know that the the ceramic bezel does look fantastic as well, but. I wouldn't say it's better than the than the steel bezel. It's just preference at this point, and you know, uh, I, at this point in time, I'm not willing to pay the extra premium for a white dial ceramic bezel Daytona because you know it's essentially the same watch. And I feel that uh, as time goes by, you know, these one one six five two zero will you know will 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 come up in price and be. And probably be regular, you know, be around the same price as the ceramic Daytonas, right? Just like the GMTs, you know, it's a beautiful watch, very elegant. Um, I wouldn't say it's discreet, as people kind of know what this watch is. Right? It's a beautiful watch. I would say when I first got it, I was surprised at how small it was. You know, it, um, but it's a beautiful watch, right? Is it worth the money? Uh, would you would you rather have a Royal Oak instead of this um, Daytona? Um, you know what? The cost of ownership for the Rolex Daytona is a lot lower than AP Royal Oak One Five Three Zero Zero. Like these watches, you know, they still can be serviced by independents and um, really robust movements. Uh, whereas, you know, for the AP Royal Oak, you gotta send it back to AP and that would definitely cost you about $2,000 at least to to service and to replace parts whereas you know the cost of ownership for the Daytona is uh, significantly less I'm gonna say 50% less right it shouldn't cost more than a thousand dollars to service this with an independent in fact I'd probably say maybe more like $700 seven you know between five to seven hundred dollars to service this and um, that's why Rolexes come on such a, a premium because the cost of ownership is is significantly lower than any other um, 
luxury sports watch out there in the market and it holds its value right so you know they say rolex is king they say cash is king rolex is pretty much cash it is a form of currency it's very liquid and um you know love or hate the brand it's it's just how it is you know rolex is the king of of luxury watches right i know there's pateks ap's vacherons langanzunas breguets but none of them uh, command such uh, desire and um, and has such a following compared to uh, rolex right so and this you know the daytona is the king of uh, rolex steel sports watches right i know there's a sub there's a gmt but at the end of the day you know it really comes down to the daytona when I was when I owned the Sub or GMT and I saw someone with a Daytona, I was always, uh, I was always struck with a. You know, it it always. Uh, I don't know how how to explain it. It wasn't, I wasn't awestruck or anything. I was like, wow, that's a Rolex Daytona. You know, it's it's, it's a great piece, uh, which is why I wanted to experience ownership. Um, sounds kind of superficial, but I was just curious, you know, and. And now that I know, I'm I'm really glad that I, uh, I pulled the trigger on one of these, and if you can find one in good condition, it's it's a safe bet, you know. If you enjoy it, love it, keep it, the Daytona will last you a lifetime. Okay. Anyway, thanks for watching. Mwah.